Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse, our, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. Mm -hmm. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet. For the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of the taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, 
the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to you. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. Let us read Psalm 63, found on page 5 in the bulletin, responsibly by verse. No.
reading from the first epistle of the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Luke. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all the other Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told them this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have been looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord.
morning. Please be seated. Since I see some new faces, I'll introduce myself. Um, and for those who might be watching on Facebook, I'm Barb Resco. I am now an applicant in the discernment process for the Episcopal Church, but I've been a member here for 10 years or so and an Episcopalian my whole life, and I'm a social worker most days of the week. Happy Vernal Equinox. It is the first day of spring. To me, it feels like winter has been more than just the past few months. It feels more like years, at least two. This must be a little bit of what it felt like in Narnia as the world began to thaw and wake up after a hundred years of winter under the white witch as she slowly lost her power but was still battling to keep it against Aslan, that allegory for Jesus, who brought hope to all creatures and led the battle to fight for their lives. This springtime feels to me more profound than in the past. In the Mid Midwest, we're used to spring. You know, one day it's 60, the next 30. Rain and cold one day, sunshine with cool breezes, sweltering heat in the afternoon. It's the Midwest. It feels like there is potential for life-altering changes this spring. As the springtime storms wash the faces of this hemisphere of the earth and the spring breezes carry the allergy-inducing pollen that will bring forth the colorful flowers and plants that remind us of the beauty of God's creation. We have all that to look forward to. But we all know that while today is bright and sunny, the long-lasting beauty of spring doesn't come for at least a few more weeks. Right now, we are in that ugly part of spring. The trees are still pretty bare, and even the needles on the pine trees are kind of dull. The air is still chilly, especially at night, and the ground just looks dirty. The grass is mostly brown with faint areas of green and large patches of mud. The pavement seems to be coated with a thin layer of that mud that seems to get all over the floor, especially when you walk in your house right after you've cleaned it. <laughs> the world right now does not feel beautiful, not only because of the muddy cold weather, but also because of the ugly and terrifying ability we have as humans to destroy each other through war and hate. There is a heaviness in our existence right now because we know that the mud in Ukraine and other war-torn parts of the world is wet by something other than water. We know that there are politicians passing laws that deny a person's ability to be who they truly are. There seems to be more shootings more suicides, and more overdoses. Despite the signs of spring that are peeking into our day-to-day -day lives, it feels like the White Witch is still fighting to keep it winter, but never Christmas. There is some hope that God has called and is sending a servant like Moses to guide his people to a better kingdom. I don't know that the servant had a clear message from a burning bush that was, that was not being consumed as God called to them. But like Moses, the servant is scared and uncertain of their ability to do what God is asking of them. Who are they that people will listen to them? Their life has been a mess and it is much easier to stand in a field and mind the sheep and goats. To be God's servant is not easy or comfortable, 
And it may mean doing things that scare them and talking to people who intimidate them and standing up for people who are in an even more vulnerable state than they are. In today's Old Testament reading, God told, no, told Moses, I will be with you. God does not promise success, but God promises, I will be with you. This reading is familiar to most, most of us. And we know when Moses questions God about what name should he use to explain to the people who sent him, God memorably says, I am who I am. Hebrew scholars have pointed out that this is the, actually, in the grammar of Hebrew, it's the third person singular masculine form. I'll be honest, I've never been into grammar, but it's important. It's this for, the form of the world, of the world, of the word to be. That verb that tells us who we are. So it could also be translated to, he is what he will be. Which leads us to the question, God will be what? And later in Exodus, we learn that God will be the savior, the healer, the revealer, and the covenant maker. To name just a few roles of who God will be and who God is. But most importantly, this indicates that God is known through God's actions towards creation. It is through the actions that God has promised us, his servant, I will be with you. Paul reminds the Corinthians and us in turn of this in today's New Testament reading. When reading and listening to the commentary for this passage this week, one of the commentators stated that they did not think this passage should be read out loud to a congregation unless it was being addressed in the sermon. So here we go. This is one of those passages, as so many are, that taken out of context can be used as a justification for being cruel and judgmental to people with whom we don't agree. It's an opportunity that people will take to cause people to feel excluded from the love of Jesus. Paul has brought to the Corinthians' attention that there are consequences when people choose to live immorally. For example, he gives the consequences that were immediate. People were killed. People were punished. But often, the consequences of immorality happen over time and affect not one person, but many, who may not have had any part in that choice. Paul also does not say that we have the right to determine those consequences for other people. That is for God. The part of today's passage, though, that may be most difficult to swallow for some is the last few lines that is the source of that common phrase of faux comfort. God doesn't give us more than we can handle. I call this faux comfort because what does it mean when one cannot handle what they have been given? Does it mean we are weak or we have somehow fallen out of favor with God? I don't believe that God will give us more than we can handle, but I do believe that other humans might. What I think Paul is trying to communicate is that there are consequences to the choices we make and that are made by others. And no matter what, God is standing there with us as we cry and scream and break down and fight because God loves us all even when we make bad choices. 
The first part of our Gospel of Luke seems to build on this idea of consequences. Jesus is addressing two tragic events and asks the people if they believe the victims of these events had somehow sinned more or worse than others. Jesus emphatically then tells them, no, they haven't. We live in a world with so many literal and metaphorical moving parts that sometimes awful things happen to people because of the choices of others who they may not even know. And sometimes things happen to people because of our own choices. And when these awful things happen, there is a certain comfort in believing that it is all part of a divine plan or that it happened because God must be punishing someone for some sin. It is much more comfortable to believe in a cause and effect that does not reflect on our personal responsibility of humanity for the terror and pain that we can inflict on each other. Jesus wants us to understand that there are indeed things that are out of our control. And there are things that we do have control of. And one of those is our minds. We can change our minds away from the injustice and war to justice and creation. How do we do that? Jesus then gives us a parable. He tells us about a fig tree that was planted by a man who we assume wanted to enjoy some figs. The fig tree just sat there for three years and did not give him any fruit, not one fig. The tree was taking up good soil and drinking up water and nutrients, but not producing anything for the world. The man was done with this tree, but the gardener wanted to try one more thing. The gardener thought, maybe if I give this tree a little TLC, good fruit will begin to grow from it. And if it doesn't, then we know what the consequences are. We know that they must happen. Well, we could go into a very deep analysis of this parable, asking if we are supposed to be, if we are supposed to be the tree or the gardener or the manure, or which role is Jesus taking? But I'm worried that would make this sermon unnecessarily long. So I'm going to share what I think Jesus is trying to get across. Mind you, I could be wrong. When are you, when are you living your life? Let me try again. When you are living your life and navigating through this world, are you bearing good fruit? The answer to this question is somewhat subjective because one might argue, what is good fruit? I'm a fan of strawberries and bananas and melons myself. But we know that that is not the fruit that Jesus is talking about. Jesus is talking about the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, truthfulness, gentleness, and self-control, to name a few. You could also include justice, empathy, equity, generosity, understanding, and hope, to name more. So as you go out into the chilly sunshine of this muddy spring day, I ask you to think about what fruit will you bear? And as you are deciding this and hearing that call to be God's servant, remember that God will be right there with you. Amen.
standing as you are able. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one whole Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found on page 7 of your bulletin. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are linked closely with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray for all those engaged in vocational discernment, especially Barb Resco. We pray for those in harm's way, especially, especially Michael, Ian, John, Scott, Russell, and all essential workers. Are there others you wish to name? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation, especially Kay, Al, Dick, Elmer and Letty, Carol and Dennis, Gail, Jackie, John, Marilyn, Lindsay, Lillian, Dee Dee, Evelyn, Lee, Sandra, Nancy, Rod, Joan, Ginger, Chris, Peg, and Bill. We also pray for those infected with COVID-19 and their caregivers, and all those experiencing violence throughout the world. Are there others you wish to name? We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Are there others you wish to remember?
Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Please kneel as you are able as we confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, bring you to eternal life. Amen. We stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Okay, this has gotten unusually quiet. <laughs> Usually having to break things up, so. <laughs> well, good morning and happy first day of spring. And thank you for being here to join us for this day of worship. And I think we have some announcements to share. Is there? Um, good morning. Um, I just wanted to invite you all out to uh, Wednesday at 7 p.m. There is going to be a dinner church. In addition, and in addition to that, there's also going to be a recital here in the nave um, of the students that have been taking lessons um, at the church. That involves uh, Elena Miller's students, my own students, and Grace Whipley's. This is a part of the Sing Turnship program that we started. Um, so if you 
are, have already eaten dinner, come on over here and listen to these uh, young singers perform. Sorry, this might take a minute. <laughs> So next Sunday, March 27th, after the service, we are having a potluck and a fundraiser. And the fundraiser is to benefit the Lucas County Human Trafficking Coalition Emergency Fund. <laughs> wow, what a, what a long name. We have amazing auction items with 18 auction items. Um, Marianne Brown is, did a needlepoint eyeglass case. Barbara Bailey made a homemade purse. Steve Whipley is doing greeting cards. Grace Whipley is doing a video of her music. We have quilts. We have an antique uh, cane chair. Japanese Kamiko. Did I say that? I don't know where Joe is. Um, Danny and Scott are doing a three-course dinner at their home. Carol's done a framed photograph of the nave. We, Julia Burchester has done a quilt and a cross stitch. John Ehrman has done blown glass. Ebony Waru is doing a rag doll. Ann Morris, a baby blanket. Nancy Lehman, three months of cooking. Joe Meyer, a painting. Ann Heckler, bless her, with a broken an ankle, is still offering to do a yoga class. Sarah donated an Ohio State pil pillow. And we're going to have Sphinx Orchestra tickets, correct? So there's a lot. So it's going to be, it's a potluck. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, please, please go home and call your neighbors, call people you haven't seen in a while, invite them to come. If you're a cook, please bring a dish. Um, Donna shared with me that I didn't know that if you like or share something on Facebook, if you use a, a four-word sentence, at least a four-word sentence, something like, this looks like fun, it'll get picked up more. So when you like or share it, which of course you're all gonna do, uh, make sure you do that. And then in the back, the office printed these postcards. So it has the information on it. Take one, bring it to a friend, stick it on your refrigerator, and we look forward to seeing you next weekend. Sorry, it was so yeah, long. You, you, you buried the lead about the potluck. I, I mean, know. that's all I need to know is a potluck. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. A couple of other items to make you aware of. Um, so Palm Sunday is just three Sundays away. And if you may or may not recall, since we only do it once a year, at Palm Sunday we also hear the Passion Gospel. And it's often, it occurs a lot of places, and I'm sure we've done it here in the past as well, where there are different voices invited to read the parts of the Passion. And if you are have feel the itch or the urge to share your voice to add it to that chorus, um, please contact the office and let them know that you would like to be a reader. And again, that's going to be on Palm Sunday. And oh, this afternoon or evening at 5 o'clock, we have a 5 p.m. Uh, Eucharist service here also on Sundays. But on the third Sunday of the month, it is actually a healing service as well. Um, so they're providing the uh, anointing and laying on of hands for those who are seeking healing. And so I commend that to you. If uh, you are in need of healing or know someone who is and would like to offer prayers for them, please join us at 5 o'clock this evening right here in this space. And, oh, um, birthday blessings and anniversary blessings. It's the third Sunday. Do we have any birthday celebrants or anniversary celebrants who would like prayer and a blessing? Well, I'm going to invite you, if you're comfortable, to come forward. If you're not, you can stand where you are. See, everybody waits for the first person to stand up. It's like, thank you. Thank you for that, Dave. <laughs> so I'm guessing birthdays. Okay? Wonderful. Well, then, let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we bless you, we praise you, and we give you thanks for all the blessings of this life but especially here today for the gift of years, for that growth in grace and wisdom and love that you bestow upon us through your Holy Spirit to sustain us through our years. And I give particular thanks for the presence of Dave, Terry, and Dee as bearers of that light and love in the world. And Lord, I ask your blessing upon them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May it be with them this day and all the days of their life. Amen. Thank you for sharing. Um, one other piece of uh, information to share with you, because we do have guests with us today, 
is to make you aware that in, 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 at St. Michael's, all are welcome to come to this altar for communion. If you are, do not choose to partake in communion, but would like to receive a blessing, please come forward. And when you come to before me, just simply cross your arms over your chest, and that will indicate to me that you would like to receive a blessing. It will be my privilege to offer that for you. But otherwise, all are welcome, and I hope you will take advantage of that invitation. Now, walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. And the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is God. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. the gifts of God for the people of God.
Kneeling as you are able, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Look mercifully upon this, your family, almighty God, that your great goodness, that by your great goodness, they may be governed and preserved evermore. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. 